Scott Forty from Yahoo Sports, college football writer who uh, joins us now. He's covering the ACC title game Saturday night between Florida State and Georgia Tech. Your reaction when you saw the Final Four last night? Uh, can I say real quick that I still have hearing loss in my right ear from a Clash concert in 1983, I think. Really? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> is, it loud, is, that your best, that is that your best concert? That's the one that you're proudest to say you went to? Probably so. Yeah, there's plenty I, I would like to not admit that I went to. <laughs> that, that, that would probably be at the top of the list. All right, give me one that you're embarrassed to say you went to. I'll give you mine if you give me yours. <laughs> All right, uh, Huey Lewis in the News. Well, that's not too bad. It's not too good. Okay, what year? What year though? Was it like tw- you know, 2010? You went? <laughs> no, it was when he was big. It was like 1985 or something, 86. I went to a Britney Spears concert. Ooh, ooh. Well, you know, at least she was good to look at, right? She had seven wardrobe changes. And wow. Here, the bad part, Pat, I was by myself. I'm sure you just kind of blended into the crowd there. Yeah. Fine. And I went to see One Direction as well. So there you go. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. getting deep into the closet now. Here. Yeah. 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 All right. Help me uh, understand the final four. What do you think? Uh, you know, I, it's interesting. I still, I, I don't understand why Baylor is six. I, I would put Baylor ahead of TCU and Ohio State. Uh, the, the Florida State drop is interesting. I don't. I'm not outraged by it at all. I think it's. I think it's understandable. Uh, but the the Baylor thing is the one that really stands out to me as objectionable. And you know, if everybody wins, uh, TCU is in. Uh, you're you're a big favorite against Iowa State, so they really like TCU. And you imagine Baylor being on the outside looking in if they win, and uh, they had their their win straight up against TCU. Yeah, I do. I mean, I. I Head to head has got to matter, in my opinion. And if you if you play ten common opponents and you beat that team, to me that should be the differentiating factor. Um, you know the the great thing about the Big Twelve is that everybody has to play everybody. So it's not like you know somebody dodged a really good team. And uh, I just I think that should matter more than it does. And I and then I put Baylor's resume up against Ohio State's. So I don't think it's close. If Oregon wins on Friday night. Can you make a case Oregon's the number one team in the country? Yeah, I think you can. Um, I think they're playing better than anyone, I would say. You know, I mean, not that Alabama's playing poorly by any stretch. Alabama's playing really well, but Oregon really seems to be hitting on all cylinders and to have done so for a sustained period of time, like six weeks now. And it won't be easy, I don't think, against Arizona. You know, that's... Oregon's season low in scoring this year was against Arizona. Oregon's season low last year in scoring yeah. was against Arizona. That Rich Rod 3-3-5 defense has given them some trouble, but I expect that if it's a healthier Oregon team, I think they're going to probably win pretty handily. All right, who loses this weekend? I think the most likely losers are Ohio State and Florida State. And, you know, I, it's become a sucker play to even say Florida State's going to lose, and this is about the fourth <laughs> time I've said it. And, and they've made me think I was going to be right and yeah. I've been wrong, but I think this could be the week they go down. Talking to Pat Forty from Yahoo Sports. Uh, let's uh, look at the openings here. Florida, Florida's got a new head coach? Hey, close. Close. I uh, haven't heard a tangible update this morning yet, but they uh, they were in the last stages of negotiating the buyout with Colorado State to get uh, Jim McElwain. He had a big buyout there, $7.5 million. Uh, it's going to probably be reduced from that, but not just wiped away by any stretch. There could even end up being like a, a game in Denver between Colorado State and Florida to help uh, – mitigate that but but I see it's close I'd be very surprised if it doesn't happen today. but you bring up something I brought up uh two weeks ago that if you have a coach leave a program because they can get up and leave and break a contract that you must play that school that you left and you must play them at their place what do you think of that I like it I think it's a, a fine I guess especially yeah there's so many broken contracts I think it's a good way especially for a smaller school to recoup I mean if you our Colorado State, and you can get Florida to come play in Mile High Stadium, and you can put 75000 in there. The gate receipt is huge. The exposure is huge. The opportunity to try to beat them is huge. I, I, I like the idea. Okay, what are we doing at Michigan and Nebraska? You know, I, Michigan it took them 
72 hours to get around to doing what should have taken about 12, but they, they finally got it done. I, the speculation is they'll at least ask Jim Harbaugh. From what I've heard, he doesn't want to go back to college football. He's happy in the pros. Maybe not going to stay at San Francisco, but he wants to stay in the NFL. Uh, from there, I don't, you know, my sense is Les Miles is not going. So then it gets a little more open and a little more interesting. And outside of the Michigan man cocoon, and I, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if Dan Mullen is in play there. Um, I think mm. he'd be a, a very good choice to go after there. And then at Nebraska, that's a, that's a good question. I think McElwain was on the radar to a degree there. And you take him out of the mix. Scott Frost is the kind of the popular name. He was a quarterback at Nebraska, and he's the offensive coordinator at Oregon, where they, you know, they run up points like crazy. The only question there for me, Dan, is. Where does Scott Frost begin and Mark Helfrich end as the offensive guy? Yeah, I like Frost there at Nebraska. It seems to make sense. Uh, I don't know enough about his resume and how good he is at what he does. And, uh, you know, a lot of Oregon is based off of Chip Kelly. So I don't know how much, you know, Scott Frost is doing there, but it seems like local boy makes, makes good to bring him back. The Michigan thing, I think they got to go outside of the Michigan man uh, syndrome that they have there if they're going to get somebody, somebody big, somebody good. Totally agree. Uh, you know, I think that they've, they've wasted a lot of uh, opportunity and time and effort in the last couple of decades fixating on the, you know, continuing the whole Bo Schembechler line basically to a degree. And then to the to credit of interim AD Jim Hackett, he said yesterday that basically we need to throw that out of the vocabulary, Michigan man, because it's been, it's, it's gone from being a point of pride to something that's almost become, you know, a, insular to the, to the point of being definite. Heisman over. I think, but give me guys say give Melvin Gordon one more chance. If he goes for two fifty or something against uh, Ohio state on the big stage and scores four or five touchdowns, maybe Mariota stumbles a bit then then there's a chance for Gordon to win. They're not going to sit him down in the fourth quarter if he's got big numbers this time around. I don't think so, no. Yeah. It's amazing since his, his record lasted all of a week. Uh, good to visit with you. Safe travels to the uh, ACC title game. All right, thanks, Dan. All right, that's Pat Forty from Yahoo Sports.